Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be loading some XML content into a database. So XML is extensible markup language. Uh, it's a way to typically use to uh, communicate data. The other way you can do it is JSON, which is the preferred way. And we'll be discussing JSON in more depth in next week's video. The homework will be in JSON, but the same principles apply. So I've used the database from the mock test. There's a bank owner who owns multiple banks and the bank has multiple customers and so on. Uh, but I'll only be using the owner and the bank table for um, this video. So I've set up a small XML file as well, which I'll show to you now. It looks like this, it's very simple. So there's one owner, which is the root element, and then it has some elements for data inside of it and there's two banks inside of that owner. So what we'll be doing today then is that this owner uh, will take these elements and populate, or let's say the name, surname, email and password elements and populate the owner table with those in the XML file. And then we'll create two banks, FMD and APSA. Uh, that will be two records inside the bank table. Uh, we will be using link to XML for this. So I've set up an initial application already. It's just a MVC application, as you know, uh, with an entry index file and um, the EDMX that was already generated. And we've shown in previous videos how we can go about generating uh, this uh, EDMX, which is entity framework as, we, as you should know by now. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is locate that XML file. Uh, and I'm simply going to do it in the index file for now, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, I've placed the um, XML file in a very simple location, so it's just the root directory of the application. Uh, to get that path, we can use a line of code, code called um, map path, so we'll just get the path quickly. I just googled this by the way, I don't, I don't know this out of my head, so... So the tilde means the root directory and then we just use uh, the file name and this will give you the path to the file. We can then load uh, that file into an X document um, which is uh, the way you can use link to XML to load an XML document into memory. So we can just type it first and then Like this. And if we look for potential fixes, it says we should include that library. Done. Okay, and then you can just load that XML document. So let's 
second that load and pass wow. so that loads uh, this this file into uh, the XML document. You can run this picture to see what happens. Breakpoint there, so it's a tech breakpoint. And then, if you hover over X dot there, you'll see that all of the data in our XML file is loaded into that X document object. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is pause um, the X document, which is done using link. Bit different from the link we've done before, but it works in the same way. So we can go. So we need to get all of the owners in the XML document. Uh, in this case, there's just one, but we should think about if there was more than one. So we call it owners. And then x dot is a function in linked XML called descendants that gets all of the descendants of the XML document. So we only want the owner descendants. And then we can use uh, the link syntax that we know. I will be doing a lot, so you can just put in curly brackets like that. Uh, the first thing we'll do is get the name of the owner. So ZZ refers to the owner now, and we can refer to its descendants. Because if you have a look in the XML document, uh, there you will see that the name element is a descendant of owner. Uh, you can use X attribute if the name was an attribute of owner. So we go descendants like we've done before, and then we can put in. Okay. We can use that first. Like that. You can use that first or default if you're expecting a null. Uh, but you should be formatting your XML documents like you expect them. So the name field in the database is required, and as such, it should be a requirement of the XML document as well. Uh, you can put this in a, a try catch just in case the formatting of the XML document is wrong, but you can expect, you should be expecting, or that it should be a requirement of the XML document that it should have a name element. So we can do the same for all of the other elements uh, or the simple elements. So, surname, email, and password. Uh, like that. And then we have those already. So, uh, the, the banks are a little bit more complicated because there are two banks within the owner, so that will return the list. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've created a function to take care of that. So I'll show you how that works now. 
uh, we are expecting a list of bank. It doesn't know what bank is yet, so let's have a look and see. You can click the models folder. And there we go. And then we can call this bank items. I'm going to create a function called load bank, so I'll just call it initially. So we have a look again at the XML document. We can expect a list of banks. This can go on forever, so I will call it a list. And then we get all of the descendants and put them in a list. So you should remember that these descendants are X elements then, and then we need to convert them to a list of uh, banks, so the entity framework bank, uh, bank model. So let's define this function quickly. It will be a private function since we're only going to use it in this class. We'll be returning bank models. So we call the function load banks. And that takes a list of X elements. All right. Since we're going to return banks, a list of banks, we can define a to return object. Can loop through the X and out banks to gather the data from there. So okay, that's how we loop through it. Um, and we're going to create a new bank with each. X and L bank. Right, so now we can start populating this bank. The first thing we can do is name. So we get this from here. You can see that there's a name and a head office city. We don't need to populate the ID because that will be auto-generated and if we put the bank inside the owner, that owner ID will be automatically populated. Uh, that's just how Entity Framework works. So we can go bank.name and we can say that's equals to so this current object and so now bank dot descendants so we can expect that there will be a name that should be a requirement of the XML document and then we go to file uh, we can then do the same for the other attribute, which is the head of the city. And there we go, that's our function that is written. So we should just 
Oh, well, it's not a function button yet. We should just add this back to the list that we will return. So this will then loop through all of the banks in the list of X elements that were sent through. And then we can simply return that list. So this will populate uh, bank items there. And it's populating it with that list of banks. Okay, this owners function needs to uh, return uh, owners for each of the owners in the XML document. So uh, we can say return new. This will be new link syntax for you. Uh, so we just need to define the attributes here. The first attribute of our owner is the name, and then we can say that is equal to the name item we distracted dot value. And the second attribute is surname. So uh, to define the banks in the owners, there's a list of banks there, so we banks, and then get the banks that we uh, use the banks that we got there. So banks is equals to bank items like that. Then we just need a common point there. And there we go, that extracts all of the owners from the XML document and all of the banks within that owner. So let's run it and see what happens. Get a list of owners back. So you can see that the data from the XML data and the XML file are loaded in there. There's two bands which should be F and B and APSA. F and B and APSA. So these have not been populated because this hasn't been saved to the database. So let's do that quickly. So we need to create a DB object first. Go and then we'll say because we're adding owners db dot owners dot add owners like that. I will put the owners because that's this, so we have to use the add range. that list of owners and then we just go with db dot save changes they should then add records to our database let's have a look
So if you look into your database quickly to validate if the data is there, you can go to the owners table and select the data there. And then you'll see the data from the XML file in the database. And then there should be two banks, so you can apps on. And so they can be and apps. And there we go. Uh, once you understand how to use this, it becomes quite straightforward. You just have to get used to it. There are similar ways to do this with JSON as well. Uh, often easier with JSON even. So you can go and have a look at the Newtonsoft library. We'll be using that library for next week's tutorial as well. Thank you very much for listening. And let me know if there's anything I should explain further.